Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're listening to the Ask Brian Radio Show on KHS 1220 and 98.1 FM. Well, every week we have a show where we discuss something about business. Try to A, either help people out with something about business or B, learn somebody's story. And today we got both. It's a double whammy. We get to learn about business and 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 a person who actually created a company. So we're going to learn a lot. Now, for those of you that have been saying, where, where have I been? Because we've had Tracy, my co-host, doing the show for the last couple of weeks. Well, I was in Machu Picchu in South America. I also went to Rio and Buenos Aires. And no, I was not running from the law. But, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> I am back. And we have a great show today. And I have my co-host, Alex Grossman. Alex, are you there? Mr. Brian Johnson, I am definitely here. And I'm so happy you're back from Matsu Pea Shooter there. That's great. <laughs> I almost jumped down on the Incas. What can I say? Now, um, <laughs> people always ask us, and I think, Alex, you were asking me before, why is Ask Brian spelled with an E? And I was going to give you some help there. So uh, you want to go over that little Stick. I, I really want to know because, you know, I, I, I know that a lot of people spell it with an A. I mean, some people spell it with a Y, but why an E? I just don't get it. I, I'm lost. Well, I probably came up with a name when I went to that Irish pub down the street, O'Brien's. And, you know, I was there and at the oh. O'Brien Irish pub and drinking my beer, which has two E's in it, by the way. And I said, wow. We need the name of a show, and it's spelled with an E, Brian, B-R-I-E-N. But one of the reasons why we saw Brian is, well, in order to create the show, we need an engineer. And that is, are you going to say anything? Me. Jen, it's come me. on. It's me, yes. <laughs> woo All right. <laughs> Couldn't do the show without her. Oh, thanks. All right. And then one of the other reasons why we have E is we have a lot of something what our guest is entrepreneur now try to spell it alex <laughs> I, I, i'm lost i'm lost yeah. lost has no e's in it but that's okay <laughs> another reason why we spell brian with an e is we have a lot of experts in order to be on the show you need to be an expert we don't want anybody to be on the show we want somebody that has a background and we usually determine somebody to be a background with 10,000 hours. So typically, if you're working 40 hours a week, you work 50 weeks a year, that's 2,000 hours for five years. Usually people after 10,000 hours start to have an experience level that they can actually answer questions as an expert. And that's what we try to do. However, we know the typical entrepreneur does not work 40 hours a week. In fact, if you find me an entrepreneur that works 40 hours a week, they're probably out of business. All right. So entrepreneurs typically spending 80 hours a week at least. Thereby, in two, two and a half years, they are an expert and eligible. That's another E, not on our show typically. Eligible to be on the Ash Brian radio show as an expert. Wow, that's a lot of E's. <laughs> what do you think, Jen? Too many E's? I think that might be too many, yeah. I think I should Dial have it a, back a little. I think I should have had a Red Bull. <laughs> then I could have had more Oh, e's. I don't think you <laughs> and extra caffeine uh, is a good combo. Uh, I think maybe decaf might be in your future. I don't, well, I don't even know what decaf means. <laughs> <laughs> Nor do I ever want to learn. All right. Uh, other reasons why That we was have... excellent, by the way, Brian. That was, that was really excellent. I, I'm impressed. And what do we try to do each week? We try to educate people, and that is actually a great segue. And since we have gone over this for a little while, we do try to educate people. But guess what, Alex? Our guest Tell today. Our guest today also tries to educate because he has an academy. And our guest is right here. David, are you there? I am here. Thank you for having me today. No problem. And he didn't like say, oh, my God, what's going on? And just take off. He said, all right, <laughs> I'm gonna, I am gonna. I have the stamina. I have the determination and tenacity. All right, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. 
So, David, uh, just in a couple, maybe two or three minute summary, try to give a little bit of a background of who you are. And I, I want to get into the company that you have and all about the company because that's what our show is today. But I, I do want people to know who you are and I want like a two to three minute uh, synopsis. Yeah, no, absolutely. I appreciate that. So, you know, I started my entrepreneurship journey back in 2009, just coming out of the 2008 crisis, right? And uh, at the time, I was a store manager at a place I think everybody's familiar with. Some are near and dear to their hearts, Circuit City, right? So I was this, uh, it was my first job out of college and, uh, you know, realized I was pretty good at sales at it, moved my way up the ranks, uh, became a uh, one of the younger store managers to ever be there. I think I was 20, 21 years old, running a $24 million superstore at Circuit City, and career was taking off just like anybody else. And I felt like I was on the right trajectory, climbing that corporate ladder, and uh, you know, got promoted, was working on an innovation team, helping the company come up with new uh, business concepts. You know, Things are flowing. And then just like happens to many of us, right? Life happened to me. And how it happened to me was with my health. I woke up one day, and uh, didn't know what was going on. I, I could barely walk. I had tremendous pain throughout my body. This inflammation was just, uh, you know, so severe. And it forced me to have to go off of work on disability. I was walking around on crutches. And then doctors were telling me at the time, they're like, Dave, anybody with a condition you got, typically, just so you know, uh, what life looks like is eventually you go on long-term disability and uh, you're going to be on meds for life. Uh, but that didn't really resonate with me and who I am and who I wanted to be. Uh, that, that story and that narrative. I had parents that were always, uh, they were entrepreneurs, always had this entrepreneur spirit deep down. So what I did instead, instead of kind of living into that label, I did something crazy. I actually wrote out a check for a million bucks and obviously didn't have a million bucks. Uh, I was off of work, got into a pretty tough financial situation. I was off of work for about uh, six months, had to force myself to get back to work before I was ready. And being off work that long, I wasn't getting paid, so bills were stacking up, so I was in a real tough financial position. So that I was so far away from cashing that check, um, you know, I couldn't even fathom how I would cash it. But to me, it was a visualization to give me something to focus on, and it wasn't about the money. Um, it was about creating a life on my own terms that defied my labels. It was about giving my wife the life that I felt she deserved, not some guy laying on a couch giving up. And I uh, always had a big heart to impact. And most importantly, I wanted to try to be, cash that check to be my hero's hero. And, you know, my heroes were my parents growing up. We had a brother that went down the wrong path in life that's unfortunately no longer with us. My dad really took that to heart as an entrepreneur. He had two companies. Uh, he did gutters and snow plowing. And he worked around the clock seven days a week, operated on four hours sleep, never saved money for retirement, never put new clothes on his back, completely selfless just to afford the things he couldn't afford to keep my sister and I busy. So we didn't go down the same path my brother did. So I knew eventually like I had to be the guy to take care of them in their later years. So that's really what that check meant to me. And, uh, you know, so I, I prayed on it a little bit and I had a friend of the family I came across that was in the insurance business and, uh, he was doing really well, a young guy and, uh, first encounter with passive income and mailbox money, I guess, so to speak. And I was like, sign me up. That's uh, what I need. Not that you don't got to work hard to get that, but the thought of reoccurring revenue was really appealing to me. And I just decided I'm going to go all in, start an insurance agency. People were telling me at the time, Dave, don't do it. You know, 70% of businesses fail. You're sick you're surely going to fail. Yeah. I leaned into faith over fear, went forward anyway, started getting my insurance license at night. And, uh, as I was getting my insurance license, one day I came in maybe a couple weeks later and right across around the corner from that circuit city, there was a insurance agency going out of business across from a DMV. To me, that was a sign. I was like, that's going to be my location, but I'm broke. I got to figure out the money. We can't start a business without funds. Right. And then, uh, Maybe a few weeks later after that, the liquidators came in the Circuit City and they said, David, all the open merchandise, the display models, the customer returns, anything that doesn't have the box, we have to get rid of pennies in the dollar. Uh, for whatever reason, immediately it hit me like a light bulb went off and I'm like, what if I just made it easy on you and I bought up all that inventory? They agreed. I took the last change out of my 401k, which after penalties, I think it was like seven grand at the time. Bought up about seventy, eighty thousand worth of electronics, and I forgot to tell my wife about it. 
came home with truckloads, filled up the living room, and she came home from her job in retail and didn't have a living room. She's like, Dave, what's going on? I'm like, well, don't worry. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out our situation. And uh, she's like, oh, I trust you, but when do I get my living room back? And uh, needless to say, I took all that inventory, ended up arbitraging it on eBay, sold it, paid off my medical debt, raised the capital I needed for my first insurance agency, and then from day one, just hustled like somebody was trying to take it away from me 24 hours a day. Hired a couple people that lost their job with me at Circuit City. And if you're wondering on that check, I did end up cashing that check about six months earlier than my goal. I wanted to do it by 35. I did it by 34 and a half. I was able to use it to you know, create a life of impact, a life for my wife that she deserved, and then uh, get back to my parents. Bought them their uh, first new Cadillac pay their bills still to this day. And uh, just a couple of years back, I ended up actually buying them a uh, proudest moment of my life, buying them a retirement home. But we ended up scaling that company to $22 million in reoccurring revenue before it was my first multi seven figure exit. And, uh, you know, then here I was, I was like, back to the circuit city days, right? Kind of shook. What am I going to do next? Was I a one trick pony? Can I do this again? And then, um, sure enough, I got in with a partner. We got back into the insurance space together, but this time in the fraction of a time, built a bigger company. Then we built a staffing and recruiting company that became the number one recruiting company for insurance agents across the nation, multiple seven figures, started a couple software companies, started going into educational masterminds, going, finding, intentionally finding the right mentors. And, um, you know, got into real estate and then we started buying up real estate and Airbnbs, acquired a $15 million real estate portfolio across all of our companies. All of our companies were for purpose companies. And you might ask, what's a for purpose company? There's nonprofit, there's normal companies, but I learned from a mentor of mine, Cole Hatter, on how you can kind of have your cake and eat it too. And you can take the profits for your business to give back to, um, you know, give back to your community. And even in our insurance agency, you know, we probably gave away, um, you know, six figures worth of thousand dollar scholarships to at risk kids. I served on the board of directors of the boys and girls club. We did that in my brother's name, our recruiting company. We would help at risk youth and, uh, uh, veterans show up better in the, in the job place when it came to interviews. So we'd always try to have that community component and a purpose and a mission in all of our companies. And then one day I'm sitting there with my mentor, Tim story. And, uh, I'm like, man, imagine if we had mentors, imagine if we had this sort of education. And this is when I started, you know, really deliberately investing in myself. And I think there's no single better investment. And, uh, and then kind of went off. I'm like, what if, what if we started a mastermind for kids? And that's actually ended up what we ended up doing. You know, so it's what's the name of that company? not what, making money. What's the name of that company? It's the fifth degree Academy. And what do they do? Um, so we basically teach kids the five degrees of learning that they don't teach enough in school, faith, family, freedom, finances, and fitness. And that's not the not school, but it's the partner with school and partner with parents. And to, to kick, we just recently launched it. And to, and to kick it off, we did something pretty cool. We went out and uh, built this you know amazing virtual event for two days, compelled some of the best speakers in the country, like Eric Thomas and Jim Quick, the brain coach, Jimmy Darts. Uh, about a million dollars worth of speakers came in and volunteered their time over two days. We had 150,000 views, 3,000 unique visitors come in on Zoom, learning together virtually, kids. And then we broke a Guinness World Record for the most amount of kids and parents to learn about financial literacy in a four-hour window together. And then that kind of, you know, launched the company. We recently launched it a couple months ago, and we're just slowly just trying to build it to give kids a, you know, a community and a, and a better chance to go out into life and thrive rather than just survive. How did people real, uh, was it based on celebrities or how were you able to get so many people so quickly to just either a spend a lot of money, B use a lot of celebrities or combination? Honestly, we didn't, it was a lot of grit and hustle. Um, that's been always been the, my, my middle name is uh, to go out and make it work. Cause we tried to do a little bit of marketing and it just really wasn't working. But something told me there's always been the saying that has always been in my heart, you know, whether it's you know God giving me the words or whatever it might be, but if you build it, they will come. And if I was trying to get some of the best speakers, I had to build something that was incredible. We've never done an event before, and we built this virtual event that the branding was on point, the vision for it, breaking this Guinness World Record, where I think it might have been the perfect recipe because as we went by the speakers and told them our vision, they're all like, I'm in, sign me up. They committed to come in for it. And then they actually shared it out to 
all their audiences uh, out on social media. Word of mouth spread. We got a lot of youth organizations behind it um, that shared it out via email. Uh, Boys and Girls Club, a lot of different organizations came in as a collective that, uh, you know, kind of got us those numbers over those, uh, over those couple days, uh, where, you know, it was a really great event and got to, got to break a, a world record for the first time. Now, I'm guessing you said this is your businesses typically have recurring income. So I guess this is a subscription model. How does, how's, how's your program work? So, yes, it's a, it's a subscription model. So what we do is made it a real low cost. And uh, what we bring is we bring in experts and or influencers like we had speaking at the event that, you know, teach on different topics. It could be um, somebody talking about motivation, self-love, entrepreneurship, uh, money management, um, you know, you name it. You know, I think there, there's so many different things when we look at, and again, this isn't knocking our school system, this is just calling out facts and statistics. We got, I think, 1.3 million youth that are homeless uh, each year that face, we got um, abnormal amount of kids that are contemplating suicide. We got uh, 33% of kids being medicated, 78% of uh, people 25 and under got subprime credit scores and they're living paycheck to paycheck. And I think a lot of times we talk about the American dream, right? And we sell kids the American dream. It's to get that new house. It's to get that new car. It's to uh, get that new phone. And we made it. But then they're living paycheck to paycheck and they're one emergency away from that whole life just crumbling down to go into a place where they can barely survive. And to me, is that really the American dream or could we teach our kids a different way? And maybe instead of leveraging the uh, new home buying program to buy yourself a new house, maybe instead you wait on getting that car, you buy yourself a duplex and you live in half of it, you rent the other half out or Airbnb it and use the passive income from that to now fund your lifestyle. So not that everybody has to be an entrepreneur, um, I think entrepreneurship's great, but it's not for everybody. But imagine that scenario where all your bills are being covered by the revenue coming in in the very house that you're living in. And then when you go to work, all the rest is just gravy. Now somebody can have a chance to enjoy life. They can, they can breathe and they're not in this place where I think most statistics from anything from suicide to divorce, all the things negative that happen in life are a lot of times are a financial consequence, not having a good understanding or relationship with money or a lack thereof. And we're just so Dave, let that me area. see if I understand this. So this is great, right? So fifth, fifth degree Academy gives people the real life experience and the real life skills they need to kind of succeed in life. The things you don't get in school. So you're not saying school is bad. There's things we need to learn like civics and, and, you know, the normal, the normal reading, writing, arithmetic, if we want to call it that, but you're giving them the real life skills to be an entrepreneur or more importantly, to take count of their own life and to, and to help themselves. Right. Is that, is that what you're doing it? What makes yours different than other types of learning experiences that, that, kids or adults can have and is your program only for kids or is it also for adults and you're going to have to wait for that answer because we're going to be taking a break you listen to khs 1220 in 98.1 fm we'll be right back with the answer welcome back you're listening to the ask brian radio show on khs 1220 in 98.1 fm and khs is like like no other station in the world really you yes. think it's like no other station world? I, I don't know. Yes, I don't know. yes. I've listened to a lot of stations. Is. I have to check out them out. But we had a big, big oh, short. Whoa, what was that? That was me. Go ahead. We had a big question that Alex had asked, and hopefully David remembers the answer. If not, Alex is going to have to repeat the question. David, do you recall? I do. What makes us different than any other programs that are out there, maybe outside the school, to fill in the gaps? Absolutely. Yeah, so I'd say, you know, what dif- makes a difference is we really try to be intentional about bringing in real world experts that have been there and done it. So they're not just teaching on it, but it's bringing in, um, you know, folks that have built businesses, that have done the things that they're teaching in life. And, you know, another part of it, too, is just like when we did the world record event, our goal of this is, too, is to bring influencers in to influence to try to bring in influencers, celebrities, people that can really, um, I guess, get kids excited about learning. So our goal, you know, while this is growing early on, our goal is to grow the size of it, to get bigger and bigger. 
where we maybe get some of their heroes and idols online, like a Mr. Beast that comes into the, into the program and teaches kids. And some of these people that they're already following, because you know as well as I know, you know, a lot of times, even when I was a kid, my parents taught me the right things, but sometimes it went in the one ear and the out the other. And we're not looking to, you know, replace anything that parents do, but use the power of partnerships where sometimes the very same message that a parent's trying to deliver their kid, you know, imagine if Mr. Beast reinforced that same message. Well, it's probably going to resonate in a different manner. And that's what we're really trying to do is grow the scale of this um, to, you know, to bring in those, uh, influencers, like even during our world record event, we had some videos dropped to us from people like the rapper exhibit, you know, he came in, gave us a video. Um, again, we had some incredible influencers like Jimmy darts. He's got 10 million followers online and he's the, the king of philanthropy goes around and does acts of kindness tests because it's not just about business that we're teaching kids and not just about money, but how do you go out in the world and be a good human, right? A lot of times that's just not in our, you know, it's not in the curriculum because everything can't be. So we brought in Jimmy Darts and he showed them the value of how it doesn't even take money to go back and impact your fellow man, to go out in the community and make a difference. And we're really trying to give these core fundamentals that are the important things that we believe can create a generation of world shakers that, you know, not only get ahead in life, but go out there and try to change the world and make a positive impact and difference. Wow. Um, that's, go ahead, Alex. I was going to say that that's a, a great mission. I, I love the mix of education and family and values, which, are, which is really exciting. And, and that's really, I, I think, a difference, right? Things that maybe they can't get in school today. So when you're looking at this, have you had good feedback, bad feedback? How, how do you handle that and how do you adjust for feedback? You're an entrepreneur and, you know, we've got a lot of people in the audience that are entrepreneurial and they always ask that question. How do I know I'm going in the right direction? How do I know if I'm going to pivot? So what has your experience been there, David? Yeah. So, I mean, for the program so far, it's, you know, it's early on for it. You know, when we did the big kickoff event, we did get a lot of great feedback where kids, you know, engage with it, join the program. And now it's been, you know, just like anything else, right? You got to, you got to crawl before you walk and you got to walk before you run. I think say we're in that crawling stage right now as we're building it up. And the exciting thing is as we, as we build it, we think we're going to attract bigger and better speakers, but I think feedback's important to us. We find out, hey, what do you want to learn? What do you want more of? And then we even try to, you know, survey people after some of the, the sessions. Like I give you an example, one session we did, like Tim Story came in, best selling author, talked about how to have the miracle mentality and have the right mindset in life. That anything good doesn't come overnight because I think social media sometimes has had conditioned a lot of people that you know, you see the people on their Lambo and they, they seem like an overnight success, but usually overnight success comes from the 10,000 hours of hard work that you talked about earlier in the program or 10 years of putting in the heavy lifting before you finally see some fruition. So he actually, he, you know, he would share stories with kids like a parable and tell them like how to have the farmer mentality. And what he would, what he would share during the call is, you know, what makes a great farmer, and it's pretty relative to entrepreneurship, relationships, and a lot of things in life, but if you think about a great farmer, it takes a lot of faith and a lot of persistence. He's got to show up and he's got to plow the land, till the land, plant the seed, but then comes in the real hard work where you got to show up and you got to water it and you got to fertilize every day. And sometimes that's for weeks and for months and for maybe even a year before you even see anything come up from the ground. But you have to show up every single day over the course of that year, however long it might be. But you stop maybe one day, three days a week where you don't water the land, it can die. And I think that's very relative to a lot of things in life, that it's not instant. But if you come in, you put in the work, especially while you're young, you can have a a great, great life. And, uh, you know, one of the things we did after that session, because I think it's important to have a vision, a purpose, and a why. You survey the average kid. And, and ask them, what is your mission? What is your purpose? What is your why? The vast majority of them can't answer that. And then what do you want to be? And they're still confused on what that is. So what we try to do is we did a, we did a vision board. And we, we, we did a vision board activity. We gave them as homework and where they had to come up with, what are the things important to you in your personal life? What are the things when it comes to your health? What are the things when it comes to you know, fun and entertainment? And what are the things in your professional career's goals 
put that up on a vision board and look at that every single day. And it's not just to be hokey, but there's real science behind that, right? And I don't know if everybody's ever heard of the RAS, the reticulating activating system. It's how our brains work. You, there's a reason why if you buy a white Kia, you all of a sudden start seeing white Kias everywhere because our brains will process <laughs> 60,000 thoughts. And it'll only pay attention to the thoughts that are most important to us. So you get what you get, right? So if you're putting in negativity, negativity is coming out. But if you're focused on a mission, you're focused on a purpose, and then you're putting in that positiveness, well, our brain starts to build those neural pathways where we get, we focus more on that, and we start to get more of that. And, you know, those are the type of things that we really want to teach kids and then give them tools that allows them to, you know, to really go on that right, that right path, that right yellow brick road, so to speak. So, Davey, you hit on a couple points that are really interesting, and I, I, I think they're, they're worth digging in. One is that you said social media, and I think it's very true, gives people this idea that they have to have instant gratification, and that's really not how life works, right? Everybody nope. knows the story of you know overnight success, and most people say, I'm a 20-year overnight success if you talk to a real entrepreneur, right? They know that it just doesn't happen. I mean, if we ask Mr. Brian Johnson here, he'll tell you that. But for the most part, you, you say that that's one of the things. The other challenge, you know, that, that you, you mentioned as well is just getting people focused and, and staying positive. And so I think having your speakers, you're able to accomplish that. Is that part of the program? Is that positivity and that attitude that you're putting forward? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we're bringing in speakers that, you know, for the most part, that's, where their mind is at, you know, they got that positive mental attitude. And then we do other things to reinforce that. Like I give you another call that we did, um, you know, at the end of the call, we gave them homework and the homework assignment was to come up with core values in the household that resonated to them in their family. And that, you know, that could be different family to family, but, you know, I shared mine, what mine were. And, uh, you know, obviously for us, we're spiritual. So we put God first in everything that we do. Um, and we, you know, we have this hanging up in our house for everybody to look at a Williams always shows up. A Williams always finds a way a Williams always never gives up. Um, and you know, we, we create solutions rather than problems. Um, and then PMA positive mental attitude. So even in all of our companies, we require that out of our employees that, hey, you can have a bad day and we got an open door policy to come to us, but we want everybody to work in a workplace. It's positive mental attitude. And, you know, we'll teach and instill these same things to these kids on the call, the value of having that positive mental attitude. Because I'll tell you, life isn't all, I think we all know that, that life isn't all sunshine and rainbows. And sometimes we got to it's our attitude and it's our demeanor that helps us persevere through that. And I, I remember back early in my days, always when I was going through all these health challenges, I was going through bullying as a kid. I'm like, God, why are you doing all this to me? Why is this happening to me? And I think that's it. And, and there's a lot of times that turns into a victim mentality. And then people go down the path of being a victim rather than a victor. But eventually, you know, I was blessed enough to have the right mentors around me and the right parents. And I realized that those things weren't happening to me. They were happening for me. If I didn't have the struggles, I wouldn't be in the seat that I'm in today because it was the, you know, the same thing when you go to the gym. If you want to get ripped and you want to be a bodybuilder or you just want to be in great shape, you got to put in the work and there's some heavy lifting and there's challenges and struggles that eventually get you to your goal. Well, life is the exact same way. And I think if we look at life through a different lens, that those get excited about the challenges because right on the other side of the challenges, is usually the next best version of ourselves, the more capable version of ourselves, and that next best version of our life where we can really enjoy life. But I, I haven't found too many success stories among people that are doing great things in life that never faced, you know, vast adversity and challenges in their life. And I think it's important to help kids understand that that's a part of life, and that's you're not going to achieve success without that being part of the program. We have to go to our sponsor. We're going to be right back. And we want to say thank you to our sponsor here at the Ask Brian Show. It's LegalSteps.com, L-E-G-A-L-S-T-P-Z, 
Com. And they've got a lot of great different features about them. The I think the best thing is that all courses are reviewed by an attorney. So you're trying to start your own business. You don't really know where to start. Um, you're a newbie at it. You've got an expert in LegalSteps.com. They will kind of guide you. They'll hold your hand. They're so confident that you'll be able to kind of take the reins on your own business that if you get stuck with it, they'll do it for you. Um, they've got 30 years of experience and knowledge. So you know, that you're in good hands there. All classes are less than $150. You're not going to break the bank trying to do this. Uh, they can review trademark, LLC, S Corporation, online courses, also a great feature. Yeah, obviously, you're busy. You've got kids. You've got family. You've got other work um, requirements. You can do this at your own pace online. So LegalSteps.com. We want to say thank you to them here at the Ask Brian Show. Again, LegalSteps, L-E-G-A-L-S-T-E-P-Z.com. Wow, that's a lot of information. So, um, have you ever t have you taken any classes? No, I have not. Well, you're going to have to take a class. I might have to kind of <laughs> peek in there. I don't know if I have the entrepreneurial like uh, fire in don't me. Don't yourself, but short. you know, you never Come know. On. Yeah, yeah. You can have Especially it. if it's I'm that tell easy. You, Jen, I'm going to tell you, Jen. I took those classes, and I actually just started a new company with help of Legal Steps. So that's awesome. It actually works. Yeah, well, and believe, it, isn't it? it makes Incredible. it super easy. That's that's the huge thing, I think, too, especially, you know, layman's here, you know, the, the legal terms. And if it's easy, gosh, it, it can't be any easier. It's great. Well, <laughs> thanks a lot. So we're going to go back. Um, David, were you still answering that question or... I uh, that that one there I had uh, just wrapped up, but I'm ready for any follow-up questions you might have. All right. So how many subscribers do you have? Uh, right now, on any given basis, on average, we're probably seeing about 50 people come in on the average call on a Tuesday night. Obviously, we got, like I said, we're crawling before we walk and walk before we run. Our goal is we'd like to get that to to 500 because we know if we can hit that magic number of 500 on a consistent basis, we'll be able to get bigger and better names that come in and pour into it. And then once we get that, you know, that authority and those bigger names that come in, that, you know, maybe grow up to 5,000 one day. And, and, and to us, it's just more the, more the, more the impact side of it that, uh, you know, I think a lot of us, when, when we look at seeing some of the things that are, uh, you know, in, in, in America and some of the people that are struggling these days, I think um, it, it's something that's really, really needed. And I think it's, you know, it's something that gives kids a, a, a better chance at, thriving versus just surviving out there. And, and a lot of it's too inspired in the name of my brother, you know, he's no longer with us. And, you know, you got the, that, the age old saying that we're the average of the five people we spend around, spend their time with the most. Right. And, you know, I look back when I was a kid, I barely had five friends. I was like, I was at that one kid. So I put my whole heart in the baseball because I didn't, you know, have a lot of friends when I was a kid. My brother had the wrong five friends. So that took him down the wrong path. And I think, there's so many other kids out there that don't have that community. And part of the vision is too, if we can create that community, give them their five people in their circle that's on the same path, you know, look at why do kids go on that path of maybe gangs or the wrong way in life is because maybe they don't feel like they're a part of something and they don't have community. And that's, you know, outside of education, we want to try to deliver that. And that's kind of the grand vision that we want to build into too, that they feel like they have a safe place they can come to them to with like-minded kids they're all on a similar mission as them in life. Are these classes cumulative? In other words, if I miss one, what happens? Yeah, so what we do is we have an app somebody can download in the app store. It's the Fifth Degree uh, Academy. Um, they download it in there, and then we have a copy of the call recordings that we'll store in the app. And then we have content that's donated from some of these experts and influencers that are in their different courses that they can take, uh, financial literacy courses. So if they miss the, the the call, the live recording of that would be in the app available for them to, to go back and, and review later. How did you come up with the name the Fifth Academy? Why not the Fourth, the Eighth? The I guess first? Fifth came from, um, you know, the, there's five pillars that, you know, we try to embrace and then everything kind of flows underneath those is uh, faith, family, freedom, finances, and fitness. Um, so those are kind of our four core educational pillars we felt was maybe not prominent enough in the in, in the school system and pretty much sums up a lot of the a lot of the core areas in life and fundamentals it's important to i think it's important to have a, as a foundation to go out there and say you know faith 
a lot of people look at that different ways. Dave, do you teach religion? No, we're not pushing religion down people's throat, but I think it's important to have faith in life. No matter how you, what lens you look at that through, whether it's, uh, you know, Jesus Christ or, uh, you know, any other way, but faith I think is incredibly important because without faith, I won't, again, I won't be where I'm at today. There was so many crossroads that I came across where I had that choice. It was faith or fear. And I think there's, there's two different ways we can, we can define fear, right? It's uh, forget everything and run, or we can choose faith and face everything and rise. So I think, you know, we, we while faith take a break. might not be prominent in our school, I think it's an important fundamental. I'm Absolutely. sorry, we got to take a break. You're listening to KHS 1220 and 98.1 FM. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're listening to the Ask Brian Radio Show on KHS 1220 and 98.1 FM. So, Mr. David, how do people reach you or reach your company? Yeah, no, absolutely. It's a great question. So they can go on our website. It's fifthdegree.com. That's a five and then T-H degree uh, dot com. And they can also email us at support at fifthdegree.com. But when they go to the website, you'll be able to check out more details there. We have an app in the Apple App Store and the Android store as well, where they can download that has a lot of the educational content and then the, you know, some of the recorded calls. Well, so if anyone needs to reach David, that's how you're going to reach them. Uh, for others who have maybe watching the show later on, we do have a podcast version. It does not have the commercials, so I know people are going to be upset. But um, <laughs> we have the podcast version. It's on Spotify, Apple, everywhere you can w- listen to a podcast. We have that come out. It comes out usually in about one to two weeks with Thanksgiving might be two weeks, close to two weeks where you can have that podcast version. We'll ask David, if you can want to share it with your, with your group of people, that would be great. Uh, and Absolutely. we do that all the time. So that's great. We have about two and a half minutes left. So, uh, we did have, Alex had one last question you want to ask. Go ahead, Alex. Yeah. So David, uh, I, I kind of get what you're saying there that parents can give their, their kids a big advantage in life. And it seems like it's not just educational, but it's also attitude and and inspiration. So how do they get started? How do they know where to start? You know, they, you got a bunch of classes there. Which one do they start with? What do they do? Yes. I mean, really, I mean, they're all kind of congruent. So the way it works is there's no particular order to them, but we bring in these different experts and influencers the second Tuesday, the last Tuesday um, of, of each month. And then they come in and speak on a different topic. And if for whatever reason, somebody misses the topic, they have the recording right into the platform. But we try to do a good rotation around it where, you know, hey, we might be talking about entrepreneurship one, one week. We might be talking about mindset one week. We might talk about like one of the last ones is, uh, you know, self-love because none of us are perfect. And, you know, a lot of times that, again, it goes back to the social media that shows this lens of perfection to a lot of people that we try to, kind of falsely chase. And so we, we got just all these really core values that we try to institute and rotate through. So really they can show up to, they don't need to be on all of them. They can show up to one, all catch the recording. And, you know, our goal is just to give them, you know, as many tools as they're willing to obtain, that's going to, that's going to help them not just survive, but to help them thrive. Sounds fantastic. I'll turn it back to you, Brian. All right. So we only have 30 seconds left. So I'm, I, and I don't want to have to cut you off, but what was your biggest challenge in this business so far? 30 seconds. I'd say just the biggest challenge so far is just, um, you know, again, we're crawling before we walk, right? It's trying to get the community built. Uh, it's trying to get um, the consistency there. It's trying to get up to that number of 500 people so it can really take on a life of its own. And I'd say that's, the, you know, probably the, the, the biggest challenge that we're in the midst of early on right now. Wow. Thanks a lot. We really appreciate you on the show, David. Um, you can listen on podcasts if you want. You're listening to the Ask Brian Radio Show on KHS 1220 and 98.1 FM. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, David. Over and out!